As the crisis worsens in the Gaza Strip, UNICEF said today that medical care at the children's hospitals there has all but ceased. UNICEF saying a small generator is the only thing powering the intensive care and neonatal intensive care units after the Al Rantisi and Al Nasser children's hospitals were attacked. A UNICEF spokesperson saying, quote, children in Gaza are hanging by a thread, particularly in the north. These children have nowhere to go and are at extreme risk. We call for the attacks on health care facilities to stop immediately. Immediately. That is the message from many healthcare workers and aid workers in the Gaza Strip. Joining us now for more is pediatric intensive care doctor Tanya Haj Hassan of Doctors Without Borders, who is in London right now. Dr. Haj Hassan, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. As a critical care doctor who has worked for years in the field of humanitarian aid, what are you hearing from your colleagues on the ground in Gaza and specifically at Al Shifa Hospital? I mean, it's a catastrophe. Words escape me. Um, I, I, I had a very short night last night, and in the four or five hours that I was in bed, I uh, woke up at the end of it to a message to hear that El Shifa Hospital had been struck three times. It had been targeted three times with airstrikes. Uh, and, uh, they, they told me that the front entrance of the hospital was hit, the emergency department entrance was hit, the back was hit, and the labor and delivery, delivery ward was hit. I then received a flood of videos of the massacre uh, of civilians who were sheltering in the hospital in the compounds of the hospital. There were 13 people that were killed uh, instantly, uh, a young girl screaming for her father, a man lying on the ground uh, with uh, a leg that had been amputated by, by the strike. Uh, he was hemorrhaging and, and screaming for help on the ground, another man with a very severe head injury, and uh, a few dead children. Um, that was the footage inside the hospital compound from the airstrike. The, um, my colleagues were obviously very distraught. The um, director of surgery at the, this hospital uh, subsequently sent us a, a message saying, dear colleagues, the situation in Shifa now is extremely dangerous. We as medical staff want to leave, but we cannot. We might not survive till the morning. We don't want to be killed here, just only because we remain committed to our patients and our medical profession. I am calling for help urgently. Please do whatever you can through your government or through the International Red Cross to arrange a safe corridor for the medical staff. Please treat this as top urgent. I have been able to reach one of my colleagues who fled to the south. Uh, she is safe, she is distraught, she is uh, in tears. Uh, the, the rest of the staff who, who, I, who, I, who I know who work there, I have not been able to reach them. Uh, since last night. I, I, I don't know uh, what they're going through at the moment. I, I can only imagine how uh, horrific it is. If, if anything is more horrifying than what we've been seeing in the last month, every day we, need, we reach a new low in human catastrophe, human 100% man-made man -made catastrophe. The IDF has denied responsibility for any strike on the hospital, but it is no doubt now the epicenter of heavy fighting. The IDF has maintained uh, and recently made public what it considers to be evidence that Hamas is utilizing hospitals as weapons depots and headquarters. Are you seeing that an evidence of that in your work and from your colleagues Absolutely on the not. ground? Absolutely not. Um, I have also worked in these hospitals, and I can tell you they are functioning hospitals, and I have never seen any military activity in them. It is prohibited under international law to target a functioning hospital and can be considered a war crime. It is no doubt the situation is dire. Israel says that it has now enacted these four-hour humanitarian pauses. Do you believe that this may help patients and staff safely evacuate? I, I, this, this concept of a pause doesn't make sense. You don't pause bombardment to, to allow people to move then just to bomb them again or to allow uh, uh, some water in just to then kill them thereafter. What is needed is a ceasefire, is, 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 is a cessation, a complete stop of the violence is what is needed. I, 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 I can't seem to understand what a pause in violence means if you're intending to resume violence straight after.
Dr. Hash Hassan, thank you so much for staying up late and giving us your insight. We appreciate it. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.